You are worthy of it all. <laughs> you are worthy of it all. For from you are wrong things, and to you are wrong things. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you now, God. We give you glory and honor. God, touch these lips of clay that it may not alter the purity of your word. But Father, God, I pray that the hearts and minds, oh God, are prepared to receive what you have to say. And so, Father, God, I just want to just tell you, thank you, oh God, for just using me as a vessel. God, thank you for strengthening me, encouraging my heart and mind, oh God. In the name of Jesus, and Father, I just give your name to praise, Lord. I thank you. Father, I say this prayer in your son, Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. I thank I thank God. I don't know about you, but I thank God. I thank God for the day and even the challenges of the day. I just thank yeah. God. Because there's yet there's still breath in my body. Oh Songwriter said it's your breath in my lungs. And I'm gonna pour out of praise. Ain't nothing gonna stop me. It's from pouring out of praise. I don't I don't know about you. You can allow the enemy to take your joy, but it's it can't go see out. But I come to understand one thing that I cannot, the enemy can't take nothing from me unless I give it to him. Oh, shot. So I thank God for victory because of the cross. Because of the cross, I got victory. So if you have any Bibles, we're going to go ahead and continue this thing. Going, we're going to try our best. Uh, I'm going to try to hit it real quick. No, I'm not. I'm going to stop lying. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I'm going to try my best to get through, through this. Man, you understand when you begin to dissect just the word of God, man. And God will just begin to show you some stuff. And even in this, as you already know, we're talking about faith and what it looks like. And so a lot of times that when we begin to look at this thing, we, we find it so we find it so difficult. My son don't mind me telling on him. But he came, he was like, Dad, I'm struggling right now. It's like, cause I I I I it's like I I I I'm trying to wait on God, but it's getting difficult. And I said, son, this is how it is. Remember Mary? Mary was like, boom. And I said, and, and, and in that, it's a mindset to understand even when everything gets hard, chips are down. And I even began to share my testimony with him so he could see what it looks like and the outcome of it. So when you understand, and as we've been reading, we're going to go to 1 through 6 here. Uh, now faith is Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hello, I'm lying that. So that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than came by which he obtained witness. That he was right, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. See, a lot of times we got to look at what this thing is saying. I, when we sit back and look at them, run through the history real quick for the past, what's this, part four, right? So part one, two, and three, and we'll try to sum it up in five seconds. And so when we begin to look at this thing, we see that even in, from the beginning when the Hebrew when the Hebrewin, when the Hebrew wrote the book of Hebrews to let the Hebrewans know, like, yo, stay the course, because they was trying to go back due to persecution. But we got to understand is that when we are on God's side moving in the direction that like He has us to go, we're going to endure persecution. Why? Because they hated Christ. What do you think they're gonna do? Hate you too. So as we continue to move, we begin to understand that. We understand that he is the creator of all. He is the creator of all. And we begin to look at that thing. First in creation was Abel, was Cain and Abel. What did Cain and Abel do? Cain and Abel, they began to offer, make their offerings to God. But God was pleased with one, but not pleased with the other. So then, therefore, out of the hatred, 
<laughs> of favor. Come on now. Out of the hatred of favor, Cain slew his own brother. See, sometimes we got to be careful. I won't say we got to be careful, but sometimes we got to begin to recognize when I'm sold out for God. Woo! Even the one that say love me will stab me. Oh, shot. I'm going to let, I'm going to leave that thing alone. When you begin to walk in what God has already declared over your life, see, there's a difference. There's something that, that takes place. So here we come to the place where we begin to talk about Enoch. Here in Hebrews 11, 5, and it's one thing that I begin to uh, love about as I begin to look at this. Look at this, 5. It says, by faith. Here we go with that same thing. Faith. Can anybody, do anybody remember what faith is? Anybody remember? Don't jump all, all at once. Uh, what is faith? Believe in something that's not tangible, but you can't see it. Mm hmm Okay. Anybody else? All right. What is the root word? What is the Latin word for faith? Anybody know? Uh, you said it. I don't forget. I forget. You said it, though. Anybody know? It's fide. F-I-D-E-S. And so, therefore, what is that? When we begin to look at the confidence of God, that's the faith. That's why he says, put no faith where? And put no confidence in who? Man. But put our confidence where? In God. So then therefore, when you begin to look at confidence, because see, it seems as though we're able to understand confidence, but not understand faith. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, I got faith in him. I got faith in him. Do you really have faith in him? Because when you got total, when you got confidence, there's no shaking. Yeah. Ooh. Well, let that alone. So when we look at this, Hebrews 11, 5, it says, by faith, Enoch. By confidence, Enoch. By confidence, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was found because God had translated him uh, for before his translation. His, for his translation, he had this testimony. Underline this, that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. Who did he please? God. And why don't say man? Because he shouldn't be. In this confidence in man. So why are we always trying to please man and not God? We want to serve God but please man. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone. That's further down. But I want y'all to look at something. So I got actually in this verse, I actually got three different writings. So the one I just read was King James. Look at what NIV says. NIV says, by faith, Enoch, by confidence, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away for before he was taken, he was, he was commended as one who pleased God. Mm -hmm. This is what it said in the Message Bible. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him away. We know on the basis of reliable testimony, what? That before he was taken, he pleased God. Anybody see what the message Bible say? It rhymed, right? It came right on in with what Hebrews say. Hebrews, I think it's up in three. He says that by it, the elders did what? Obtain a good report. So that's what he look at what the message Bible say. And then he says, for we know. On the basis of reliable testimony, meaning that the person that was able to tell what happened to him was very reliable. <laughs> oh, man. He pleased God. So I want to ask you this question. What is the big difference in you just want to serve God but please man versus pleasing God and just serving man? What is that difference? Because a lot of us, a lot of our holdups is always based off of people. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we're trying to please people. But I always ask the question, what did God say? Mm -hmm. Because last time I last, last time that I checked, people, man, can't put me in a heaven or a hell. Last time that I checked, man don't have that kind of power. So why do I waste my time with trying to please? Man. Yeah. 
So look at this. Flip back to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a look at Enoch and what this is. Because when you begin to look at Enoch, you begin, we all see like maybe three verses that's talking about Enoch. But look at this. Enoch chapter 5, verse 18. We're gonna read down, we're gonna take it to 24. It might go a little further, but I don't know yet. Let me see. Look at this. So if I'm talking too fast, say hey, slow down. If I'm talking too loud, say hey, bring it down a little bit. Look at this. It says, and Jared lived a hundred, lived a hundred sixty and two years, and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch eight hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared, uh, Jared were nine or nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. Look at this. And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. Look at this. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. 300 years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. So when you look at 25, you'll see it begin to talk about who came from Methuselah. I think it came from Methuselah. I ain't got it right here. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is when you begin to look at this from the beginning, literally beginning to start at the end part of chapter 4, where it begins to talk about the lineage. It always talks about such and such, but God such and such, such and such, but God such and such, such and such, but God such and such. But then when it gets to Enoch, what it says, Enoch walked with God. Then it goes back to, and such and such, but God such and such, and such and such, but God such and such. Well, let's look at this. God gives the God give the lineage of Enoch, Enoch being the great, 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 great grandson of Adam. So when we begin to look at, when we begin to look at Genesis 5, 22, it says Enoch walked with God, underline that. But he don't want to show you something. Because see, this is where we have our struggles. So I'm going to show you something. He walked with God. So understand this. I'm going to take this back because I know it might challenge some people. But we're going to take it back. Oh, don't you understand that Enoch is also in a place before Christ? Mm -hmm. Enoch is in a place before Christ. Enoch is in a place where everything was manual. Mm -hmm. God don't mind to know. But look at this. He walked with God. Look at 22, uh, 22. Genesis 5, 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? What is this saying? So as I begin to look at it, it's like, what you saying? That means at this place, Enoch had an encounter with God after he, after Methuselah was born. And at 300, 300, uh, 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Hold on, look at this. So you mean to tell me Enoch walked with God and was still doing some things? What do you mean? Because he still begat other sons and daughters. <laughs> look, all the days of Enoch was 300 and since I don't want to get ahead of myself so I'm trying my best to slow down. But all of the days of Enoch were 365 years. 24, Enoch walked with God till it was not. So when we begin, when we look at this thing, right? When, just by looking at the scripture, when did, when did Enoch start to walk with God? When did Enoch start to walk with God? Yeah. When? I just gave y'all the answer. After, uh... After he got the sons and daughters? F no. After he begot Methuselah. There you go. So he begot Methuselah at the he had an encounter with God at the age of 65. How old are you? 23. Oh. So you had an encounter with God before Enoch did. Whoo! Jesus. How old are you? Uh-huh. 
So you had an encounter before Enoch did. Woo! So, <laughs> so, look at this. <laughs> oh my God. Enoch being, Enoch came into the realization of who God is and with his encounter at the, age, at the tender age of 65. So you mean to tell me he lived for a whole nother 300 years walking with God. Look at this. Enoch walked with God. So I don't want to get ahead. Enoch walked with God while he was still being a man. He walked with God while still being a husband. He, he walked with God while being a leader in his tribe. He, he walked with God when he still had family duties, household duties, work duties. Because Enoch was also a prophet. When you look at Jude 114, you'll see it. But this is the thing that got me the most. Enoch kept his eyes towards God. Do anybody know what Enoch mean? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Give you a little time over there to drop it in the chat. Walk with God. <laughs> close. Very close. Enoch means dedicated. Mm -hmm. I say what? Dedicated. Look at this. Genesis 4 25. Let's we're gonna we're gonna take it back. Because I know you're trying to you might be trying to understand what makes this important. Let's go back. Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. Adam, I like this. I had to get this out of the King James uh, NIV. Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth. Saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel, since Cain killed him. Seth, the last verse in chapter 4 of Genesis, Seth also had a son and named him Enosh. At, the, at that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord. Why did we have to go back to this place? Because the people were wicked. So because Cain slew Abel, one that knew who God was. Why? This is why his ground still tells of his testimony. God to my. But now God has given Adam another son, Seth. See, this is where when we begin to follow the lineage of Seth. Guess what? Everybody after Seth that begot all the way on down to Gerard, Jared, guess what? They were all wicked. So you mean to tell me? Uh, I think I got ahead. Let me read my note real quick. Abel's offering to God came from a pure place in his worship to God. But you don't see it from no one else in the time. Mm -hmm. I Meaning you didn't see it, no, no one else didn't worship with the knowledge of who God is or being in a place of I know I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when Adam had mm -hmm. self and Enosh, it was then when the people began to call on the name of the Lord. So you mean to tell me it took it took place in one birth where people just begin to recognize. That there is a God. So because so when that began to happen, then it became like a split in the camp. Because it was just those doing their own things, and then it was just these. I'm gonna do what I want to do, but yeah, I still know there is a God. Mm -hmm. But who stood out? But who stood out? And I'm asking you, who stood out from Adam's descendants to know? Just the Enoch was the only person. Enoch stood out. Why, why, can you tell me why Enoch stood out? He walked with God. 
He stood out because exactly because he walked with God. Yeah. So why do you get mad or why do you get upset when people be messing with you because you have chose to walk with God? So it's like this is the choice that I've made. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. The relationship between him and God. Let's look at this real quick. The word walk. Yeah. Far as in the biblical expression, the word walk means fellowship and obedience with God that result in divine favor. The word walk refers to the manner of life a person living and nearest to God. Huh? God, let's just go on the scroll. Have you just been, well, you just, I just need to talk with the Lord. I remember, I'm never going forget, to forget this. We was driving home. There was a time was when we got to this area, we was driving back and forth to Florida. And it was like 12 hours. And we had left here like, oh my God, we drove, so basically we drive at night, right? So we drive it, and I had worship on. Of course, nobody's, nobody's up with me. Everybody's asleep. And I was just so gone. When I say I was gone, I was so gone. It was dark. We had just crossed the border of North Carolina from Virginia. We had just crossed into it. But I was so gone and worshiped to it didn't make sense. When I came to, yeah, oh my God, did you really? When I came to, we was in North, we was in South Carolina, and the sun began to break. But this is the thing, and I just recognize it right now. I didn't need gas until I came to in South Carolina. Well, why is that so significant? Because our gas up spot was always was always North Carolina, Fayetteville, and Brunswick, Georgia. But I made it all the way to South Carolina when I'm normally at the place I would have been. I should have been on. I should have been pushing that mother side of the road. But no, the light didn't come on. I came to and just like, oh, I need to get some gas. I got off and get gas. It's like, where we at? And I said, and I told Tamika, I said, I don't believe, I do not remember going through. Ah, that's what it was. I came to in Georgia. Because soon as we crossed into Georgia, I had to fill up. And I told I said, I do not remember going through, coming out of North Carolina and going into South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And she was like, did you go to sleep at the wheel? Um, are we dead? Are we, are we in the ditch? I, and I said, I was just in worship. I was just in worship. I was so engulfed in worship. Mm -hmm. to, that's a that's a moment that you just don't forget. And I'm just like, Jesus. Even, even my car still responded to his presence. <laughs> God, y'all better see this. Oh, let me stop, let me stop. So when you begin to, so when you begin to look at this, it's that walk with see a lot of people, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't recognize thinking, oh, I gotta stop all of this stuff because I want to walk with God. No, ain't nobody telling you to stop. Because the relationship that you have with him, he'll let you know. Yeah. He'll let you know. Because there's just certain things you just don't want to bring into his presence for the simple fact of you honoring him. God, I told no. Look at this. In his walk, Enoch, Enoch was Enoch was dedicated and devoted to what God has already said. Here it is. This is three. We're talking about older than us at 65. Everything was manual. But yet he still found time to walk with God. How what does that look like? I remember there's times I'd be sitting at my computer typing away, but yet still praying. I remember there'd be times where I just just sing a song in my spirit. That's how this is how I know when God is getting ready to do some things because I start coming up against some serious warfare. But what does that stuff do? That stuff come to begin to try to shake my 
faith begin to try to shake my confidence in who my God is. Ooh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Look at this. I, I was like, let's, let's look, look at this. Genesis 5, 23. It says that all the days of Enoch was 365 years. He walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Enoch walked with God and still had his personal duties as a man, personal duties as a husband, personal duties as a leader, personal duties, uh, uh, where am I? I lost my arm. Personal duties as a mouthpiece of God, a prophet. And guess what? Enoch wasn't even perfect. <laughs> Enoch still didn't dot every eye and cross every T. But look at what Jesus said to the rich young ruin in Mark 10, 17. He says to him in Mark 10, 17, he says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I call this? Uh, what shall I do? Wait a minute. Yeah, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. So here this is Jesus telling that there was there's no one good but God. So that led me to believe that. Enoch wasn't perfect even though he walked with God. So you mean to tell me for 300 years he still recognized that he was a sinner yeah. saved by grace. Amen. Meaning what? You're not going to dot every I and cross every T. It may not work out in what you thought it should work. Yeah. But does should that shake your confidence in God? But it rocks us to the core. Yeah. Then you want to get on, oh, I don't believe there's a God. Why? Because the Lord might have took your mom home at an early age? Or your best friend died? Think about it. Why did you get mad with God? I'm not trying to, please understand, I'm not trying to come, but we got to look at how the enemy try to torment our minds and flip the script so that we can, so that we can get mad with God and then turn our back on God. But you talking about Enoch had to give an offering, had to give a sacrifice 300 years just to be atoned for his sins. But yet he still walked with God. See, this is the thing that a lot of us don't understand. Yeah, favor? No, it's not fair. But so, because so many people don't understand why the favor is always resting on you. Because you decided mm -hmm. to walk with God. Through the ups, downs, and the indifference. Understand, we're just talking about Enoch. Why? He said that by it. The elders obtained a good report. We ain't doing nothing but looking at the report. This is what it looks like. See, a lot of us, are, my thing is, I'm going to ask you this question. When God has pressed upon your heart, what is the one thing that attacks? No, thank you, Jesus. What is the one thing that stops you from doing what God has asked for you? Or what is that one thing that keeps prolonging you to do what God has asked of you to do? I'm going to give you some time. You can type it in. If you want to shout it out, you can. Fear. Huh? Fear. Fear? Okay. Anything else? I'm going to give you some time. Fear. Doubt. Mm -hmm. Shame. Blame. Control. Think about it. Someone robbed me of my innocence. 
God, how can you do this to me? But now God want to use you as a mouthpiece, but now the enemy want to now put shame and blame. Now there's a fear. You see what I'm saying? Why is that? It's okay. Someone got anger, pride, ego. Fear, fear is the basis of anger, pride. Well, wait a minute. Fear, shame, blame are the basis of anger. Pride, fear is the basis of pride and ego. Mm -hmm. It gotta have those, they gotta have something to stand on. Yeah. So when you begin to just look at, ooh, that, ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, not letting go of the hurt. You got that right. By us holding on to the hurt or us holding on to the unforgiveness, it hinders us. Because what? We're not putting our total confidence in God because what? We don't believe that he, that he ain't going to deal with the individual that hurt me with the same feeling on how they hurt me. But guess what? What is forgiveness? It's giving up the right to hurt them for hurting you. That's why when I say, yeah, child, I left that in God's hand. Because I can't do nothing with it. That's control, yeah. That, yeah, holding on to the hurt. You're right. It is control. Because I want you to hurt just as bad as you hurt me. But don't you know that God has something greater for you? So how does this, how does this look? I got to let it go. I got to L-I-G. What I say, right here, mind, mentally, God, I got to let this go. So every time that, that moment come up, God, I thank you because I thank you because I've already forgiven. I've already released it. It becomes a practice. Because look at this. He walked with God for 300 years. Guess what? It started out as a practice. Then it became a hobby. Then it became permanent. Yeah. But what do we always do? I wish I had found this. Paul said, Paul said it this way. He said, he said that we'll become lovers of ourselves. Saying what? We'll put ourselves before God. Mm -hmm. But here Enoch didn't put himself before God. He put God before him. See, this is what happens in relationship. Ooh, boy, they coming in. Well, yeah, not let, yeah, not letting go of the soul ties. Ooh, you need to cut them joints. You just you need to cut them soul ties. So look at this. Oh, so this is not. This is just some crazy. All right, this is just this is just me thinking. Okay, look at this. At the day. Enoch was taken. He was 365 years old. Mm -hmm. You, 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 my son. You, my son. You right there with me. Enoch lived a full year for each day of our calendar year. He lived a full year. For each day of our calendar year. And then at the 300, guess what? That's where he walked with God while still being him. Oh my God. Are you, are you seeing this? <laughs> Who asked you to change? By you being in the presence of God. Oh my God. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Look at this. Now, oop, I'm almost done. Lord, I thank you. I think, I think I'm almost done. 11, going back to Hebrews 11, 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. From before his, trans his translation, he had this testimony. I just, man, y'all got to unline that thing right there. He had this testimony that he pleased God. I know y'all might be wondering why we're looking at this because we're looking at the report of the elders. Look, 
by faith Enoch was taken from this life and did not experience death. I remember back in the old church saying we don't we don't those that are in Christ they don't die you don't fall you don't die you fall asleep. And so this is what this is what happened to me. There was a time I was in the hospital for about three. Um, what's that? I was in the hospital for three days, right? And then I was in the hospital. They tried to figure out what's going on with my little ticker. So I remember laying in the bed, and I remember looking at the door. My it got dark. It got dark in that room. I ain't gonna lie to you. It got dark, like pitch black dark. And so I was laying in the bed, and then I looked to the door, but I saw a silhouette of three figures. This was the part that got me. I rolled, I looked at it, I said, you did not come for me. I rolled over and I went to sleep. This is what the Lord says to me. That's my word coming to life. He says, Paul says, oh death, where is thy stain? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh my God. What are you saying? When you walk with God. Oh my God. You can't lay hands on yourself and declare healing. Amen. Jesus, when you walk with God. Yeah, oh my God, let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. Leave that alone. See, look at this. When you walk with God, there's a certain thing that begins to take place. Yeah. Well, what are you saying? When you look at what Psalms 91 say, what David said one, he says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. You can't find me when I'm in the secret place. You can't see me when I'm in his shadows. See, this <laughs> when we begin to take God at his word and just try it, I'm just, listen, try it. Yeah. But see, the thing is, when we try it, we try, to, we try it within our own power. You try too hard. Yeah. You try too hard. Because you're trying to make this thing happen within your own power. I was telling my son with my son a testimony. I said, son, I can't believe I hit I got here. I said, but I can't believe before I even turned around, God had already filled it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because all I said was God is in your hands. I got hey, whatever you want to do, I know how to handle that. I know how to move. I know how to go. But God is in your hands. Yeah. What are you saying? I only dealt with what was in my hands to do. That's it. Because guess what God wants us to do? He wants us to rely on him. Oh, oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Before God to Enoch. <laughs> oh man. There's a difference. There is a difference. Can I get five minutes? Is that all right? Can I get five minutes? I promise I'm going to shut down after five minutes. There is a difference in walking with God and working for God. There's a difference. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Or what the difference is? There's a difference in walking. If you was listening to my session earlier, you, you can't answer. So... <laughs> There's a difference from walking, from walking with God and working for God. Anybody want to take a stab at it? I'm going to give you time to type it out. I'm going to give you time. Drop it in chat. You want to take a stab at it? Yeah, I mean, it's not really in here earlier, but um, I would say when you're walking with God, it's more of a... Uh, it's not, I want to say friendship, but like like father figure, like relationship. It's more relationship, more relational versus um, doing stuff for God. It's kind of like, a, I don't want to say like a, not like a dictatorship, but it's more like a, I do this because I have to. Mm. Versus when you walk with God, I do this because I want to. You're right. It was, this is a dictatorship. <laughs> you was right, but yeah. That's good. That's good. Any other takers? That's good. That's good. No, you're on it. You're on it. You're on it. You're on it. Any other takers? All right, just drop drop them on me in the chat and we'll come on back because I know where it's at, all right? Listen, look at John 15 and 1. 
John 15 and 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that bears not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide where? In me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. That's fine. Working for God. Is rendering good service for humanity, whether it's direct or indirect. Indirect. But he who walk with God also works for him. So just like you said, it's more of a God. I just want to. Mm -hmm. It's more of an honor. Like God, yo, like yo, I love you so much. Like <laughs> thank you. You know what I mean? Like oh man. So it's a want to. But then. But he who work for God may not walk with him. Mm -hmm. This is why God told us in 1 Peter 5 and 3, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Why? Because if I'm just working for him, now I'm trying to make everybody else do whatever. Just Versus just trying to be the boss. Because I'm, I'm working for him, meaning... I can easily fall in that do as I do as I say. Yeah, do as I say, but not as I do. Yeah. But when you're walking with it, oh my God, it's an honor. Why? Because I get the opportunity to be an example. That way I may have this testimony. Woo! Jesus. My God. Let's say that. Walking with God is a deeper relationship. You are talking with. You're talking with agreement and learning, being a servant, being a servant as doing God's service. Mm -hmm. It's a loving relationship. Good job. You own it. You own it. You own it. Look at this. Enoch walked with God. And I'm almost done, y'all. My mighty and we out of here. Enoch's walk with God was two things. Enoch's walk was visible. Mm -hmm. He lived a life that demonstrated the faith that was in his heart. Mm -hmm. His life of faith was consistent. 300 years, we talking. Mm -hmm. Every day when he got up, it remained a practice that he did not take for granted. When did your relationship get stale? When you start taking stuff for When granted. you start taking it for granted. Jesus. So understand what is God's plan for your life. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is where? In heaven. So our walk, our walk and work for the Lord should be demonstrated each and every day in our faith, obedience, and our fellowship with the Lord. In that, it shows the world what you are about and by, and, and by it, how you walk before them. So, for the enemy try to mess with you, it's not you trying to please man. This is you trying to please God. Why? Because when it's consistent and it's the relationship, it's the love, guess what? I don't care who see. Yeah. That's why when, when I look at what Jesus said, what Matthew recorded, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works. Huh? And glorify your father which is in heaven. What are you saying here? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your good works. Faith without works is what? Dead. So people will see your faith by what? Your good works. So when we begin to look at this, I'm going to drop on down. So understand. So I ask you this question. Is your walk with God visible? Hmm. <laughs> Two, Enoch's walk with God was also vocal. 
Well, we look at Jude 114. I told you we were going to get into it. 114, Enoch also, also the, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with tens of thousands of his saints to exclude judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches with ungodly sinners have spoken against them. What is he doing? He is also here. He is prophesying. So when you begin to look at this thing, I'm not going to go this way because this is what I call a rabbit hole because this is just now, it's, it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But you'll see that that one chapter of Jude comes right before the book of Revelation. So you mean to tell me he is in a eight, he is in a B wait a minute. Yeah, he is in a BC time frame prophesying of an AD time stamp. <laughs> Y'all you missed it. You missed it. When you walk with God, God will give you insight. <laughs> Jesus. Why? Because he's a God that sits outside of time. He already knows our ending from our beginning. So he already knows this entire roadmap. Are you going to depend on him who already knows the end? Or are you going to continue to rely on yourself? Yeah. Oh my God. He preached about the coming judgment of God. I read that. I read that. I read that. So is your walk vocal? Look at this. John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Is your walk vocal? Come on, Pastor Bailey just did a whole teaching just on evangelism. Is your walk vocal? <laughs> Enoch wanted, he wanted others to know God and walk with him. This is the highlight with Enoch. That by, by that Enoch's faith made him to be pleasing to God. Mm, that is our time. I'm going to end it right there. Anybody got any questions, concerns, comments? Next, uh, I think next week, next week, because it's one, two, three, yeah. So next week will be um, the last Bible study of the year. Next next Tuesday will be the last one, so I hope y'all come in on that one. Um, but we'll talk more about it on, on Sunday. Man, I truly thank God for you all. Sorry I went over two extra minutes. I do apologize for that. But man, this here was just so exciting to me. So let me let me just let me just let me just I'm gonna share this with you. I hope you don't mind. So what it looks like, this is what I begin to ask myself. When I see things that begin to bother me, or when I begin to see things that is not going the way that I would like for it to go, I wanna ask myself, one God, what are you doing? What are you doing in me? And then number two, I ask myself, can I control this situation? Or is it beyond my control? Yes, there are things that we still do because faith without works is dead. But is it outside the scope of what God has given me the hands and the ability to do? Mm -hmm. This is how I, this is how I, so it's my mindset to, God is yours. I can't worry about it. It's yours. Amen. I've done all I can do. The rest of it is yours. If I'm looking for a job, all I can do is fill out the application, do make sure make sure that my application, uh, making sure that my resume is on point, looking good. Rest is on God. Yeah. Why? Why am I putting it there? Because He already know what He already knows the best place for me. Or he already knows what he's trying to work out of me. So he's going to create that situation to work those things out of me. If I'm asking God for new strength, for renewed strength, he's going to create the opportunity to get stronger. 
So this is how this is this. <laughs> I need to stop watching so many movies. But this is how I this is how I roll. I'm not. I am crazy enough to try God at His word. I'm crazy enough to try him at his word. Do it get lonely sometimes for me? Oh, yeah, it get real lonely. Oh, my God, yes, it gets very lonely. Why? Because everybody don't understand your relationship. And it's okay. See, that's why I love those that are spiritual because then they're able to see what God is doing and saying. <clears throat> so... We thank God. If there's anyone here that know who God is and part of their sins, we pray that we know that God is knocking at the door of your heart. So if you just open up and let him in, because if you hear, you know that he is there, that he is a God. But truth, but understand and know this, that we understand that you are, that you know and you believe that, that God sent his only begotten son to live Die on the cross and rise again on the third day with all power in his hand. You believe that? Hey, <laughs> come on now. The angels of heaven rejoice, and I'm rejoicing right here, right along with you. So we thank God for, for what he is doing. So I'm going to tell you, just get into it. Make sure you get into a Bible based believing church. Bible based believing church. Make sure you develop a relationship with God. And not codependent on the pastor. Develop a relationship with God. So Father in heaven, Lord God, we bless your name, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. So God, I pray now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that your divine will continue to be done, oh God. Father, for every eye that is that is watching, every ear that is listening, oh God, continue to pour out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, continue, oh God, to help our unbelief, oh God. Father, then we know that we may trust you in some areas, God, that we have confidence in you in some areas, but God, help us to have full confidence in you in every area, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Woo. And Father, I tell you, thank you, God. I bless you, I honor you, oh God. Father God, I pray, Father, even as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Father God, that your divine will be done, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, continue to order our steps, Father. God, to where the, even where the front part of the space is in our favor. And God, we tell you, thank you. We tell you, thank you. Father, we say this prayer you done, son. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen. Father in heaven, Lord God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you begin to open doors for EJ now. God, begin to allow your divine favor, Father God, to, to just show up. God, that he will see that yet, Father, you are with him. So God, continue to find favor. Mm, come on here, Jesus. Father, I pray that he continues to walk in the favor in the name of Jesus. So Father, I pray now, oh God, that you steady his hand while you're trying to work it. In the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen now. God, we give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. God, I ask now, oh God, that you even give energy to Aaliyah. God, give energy. God, all that has been out, Father. Give energy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you continue to lead. You continue to direct. Father, we bless your name, oh God. We give you glory and honor. Father, we say this praying, you don't, son. Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all for... Uh, for joining us on this evening, we will see you all Sunday at 9.30. Praise the Lord. We see you Sunday at 9.30. You all be blessed. Love you.